As Gregor Samsa awoke one morning from troubled dreams of having been turned into a gigantic insect, which is not so much fun, he awoke to realize he was flying through space. It was so cool. Gregor was flying through space like a free spirit. Or a guy in a really cool spaceship, he was seeing explosions and celestial objects crashing into one another and blowing one another to smithereens. And Gregor, being of a rather political bent, thought to himself, Verily, the Obamacrats are like a great asteroid crashing into the planet. Democrat. Gregor realized the validity of the metaphor as he thought, Obama has done so many things to offend the peace movement. He has overseen FBI raids on anti-war activists. Don't it just make you sick? He has vastly expanded the TSA mandate that violates the Fourth Amendment. <coughs> Obama has given his support for expanding Bush's unconstitutional surveillance of American citizens. <gasps> yes, Gregor thought, look at our explosion, that is so cool. And it really does express how nobody who favors either human rights or peace could possibly support Obama now, not in good conscience. What dost thou mean, my liege? I mean, my liege, the forces of good are in disarray. The forces of good are in disarray? That sounds bad. Aye. Don't you see everywhere we look, the forces of goodness, uh, the lefty forces, the forces, for example, for peace. Aww. Remember peace? Remember Jesus and that whole peace thing? Ooh. Hi, this is Jesus. No, this is Jesus. No, this is Jesus. No, this is Jesus. No, this is no, this is Jesus. 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 No, this is now this is Jesus, your host for another supernal Perry Logan show. This one called Pieces of the Left. And you know, it just makes my heart bleed purple peanut butter to hear the American left, who evidently can't tell a neocon from a Democrat, could possibly have voted for Barack Obama. It makes me feel, it makes me sick, it makes me want to kill them and torture them and rent their flesh and flay them. Ah! This is Perry Logan, the third version of Jesus, presenting Austin beloved Perry Logan in Pieces of the Land. Serves it right! Pieces of the Land. Well, what do you know? the Perry Logan show and you encountered a metaphor that needed explaining. That's why I'm here. The uh, asteroid Obama. I'm going to explain. Visualize. Consider, if you will, a symbolic image in which Barack Obama is a gigantic big old asteroid. 
crashing into the planet Democrat. Democratic Party. The Democratic Party visualized as a planet, and you have one of these celestial explosions. Just look at this. Whoa, now there you go. There you go. That's exactly what's going on. That's fine. The left are in pieces. The left in America, as of June 28, 2012, are totally shattered. Totally screwed. I totally shattered! I totally screwed! That's my version of telling it like it is. The left are uh, in little pieces. This is why I'm telling you, first of all, don't go around barefoot. You could cut your feet on those little pieces of the left, which are everywhere. Pieces of the left, here. Well, we're looking for pieces of the left. Uh, the problem is, you see, that the left, uh, in case you didn't know, we lefties are, you know, we, we are uh, at least, we've been known to be rather fond of the Democratic Party. You know, the, the Democrats, if anyone has done anything we lefties want, such as Social Security, Medicaid, you name it, like the National Weather Bureau, like the rural electrification, uh, just kind of like lefty stuff is what's done all that. I don't want to get into it. The eight-hour day, okay? <laughs> okay. Thank a lefty if you have the eight-hour day. If you have, uh, you know, someone who's uh, make sure that you know what's in your bloody food. Perhaps I shouldn't have said that. Thank, uh, thank a lefty. Democrats of the past have been known to do uh, things that we like, things that were good. And it's kind of a well-known bit of lore among the little pieces of the left that we're looking at here. Among my people, I guess, among our kind, it's viewed that the Democrats have been just, well, how shall I say, just caving in and chewing and mewing and chow towering and getting naked and bending over for the Republicans for at least the last 30 years. Jesus Christ, Democrats, show some spine. Show some bloody spine. Ah! Harry Logan and the Democrats with Hey Democrats, show some spine. <laughs> well, it's a it's a just kind of a truism on the left, liberal circles, if if you will, that the Democrats have been retreating uh, in a crab-like fashion and just kind of just like yeah, becoming all like Puling and mewing and mucoid and snotty and spitty and vomitous and icky yucky. There. Hey, we've had our icky yucky moment. <sighs> that felt funny. That was our icky yucky moment. And now that we've had our icky yucky moment. We can get back to the shatteration of the left, which has occurred, I believe, uh, you know, it, it has occurred gradually in the last 30 years as the Democrats, I'm sorry to say, have almost steadily uh, retreated to the, uh, let's face it, more aggressive repubs, or pubs as we like to call them. I think it's fair to say that pubs have the advantage of being more aggressive, you see. <laughs> like animals with a powerful herd instinct, they will follow a lamppost. Okay, well, all right, never mind. Well, there are differences between the tribe of left and right, also well known. And one is that the right, our brothers uh, on the right have a uh, an incredibly strong herd instinct, yeah, to put it in anthropological or zoological terms. They have a, a very powerful herd instinct in the left, who are, it, well, we are in pieces kind of all the time. Lefties like to attack democratic leaders, for example, see? They shatter off into little pieces and attack their leaders. There are lefties who are like, kind of like dyed-in-the-wool Clinton haters. I never thought 
yeah, I didn't re quite realize until I, I had some experiences on the web that there's some. Uh, Democrats or progressives or people who think they're lefties who uh, hate the Clintons, or Clintophobes, okay? They have Clinton derangement syndrome, a well-known disorder of degenerates. Show me someone who hates the Clintons and I'll show you a degenerate. Hi, this is Perry's groovy version of Jesus. Watch this. Hey, you can join in if you want. Come on. Hey, do you realize that Barack Obama's standing in the polls of foreign nations is dropping like Perry Logan falling off his trampoline? Oh. <laughs> or maybe being cut down from that cross, if you know what I mean. Hey, the United States foreign policy in the Middle East and Central Asia is a complete disaster, baby. North Africa is on the way to domination by radical Islamists. We push Mubarak out without any transition. And the Muslim Brotherhood and even more extreme Islamists are nearing control. The same is true in Libya and Tunisia. That's terrible. In Afghanistan, the Taliban are resurgent, waiting on Obama's timeline for withdrawal. In Iraq, the Iranians have extended their influence, and the nation again is dividing along sectarian lines. It's just disgusting. They're all hostile to the U.S. The killer drones are creating terrorists everywhere. Visualize Obama's drone program as a meteor crashing into the earth and breaking it into tiny fragments which we could call terrorists. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, uh, Jesus. Uh, and this is uh, Pastor Perry Logan, who... <laughs> okay. Uh, Jesus, I uh, uh, thank you, uh, Jesus. Uh, yes, uh, Jesus, uh, your point is taken to heart. Oh, we can take it as axiomatic, can we not? that uh, if you're for peace, uh, you are on the side of virtue and goodness. And uh, Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus uh, was uh, all about the peace. Hey, Swanties are Christians. Jesus was all about peace. Even I, Perry Logan, can figure that out. Jesus was all about peace. Uh, any old hippie knows that, okay? <laughs> Jesus was all about peace and, uh, y'all aren't, are you? Uh, me and my cat have noticed that uh, y'all aren't for peace at all. Uh, and Jesus uh, was, uh, the point being, uh, that uh, uh, those who are for peace are on the side of a, a good. Uh, and they have uh, uh, nowhere to go in the Democratic Party. Let's just take my good friends the Occupy Wall Spheres as an example. Once the main hope of the left, the Occupy folks have given up faith in leaders and politics in general and gone off to do good works. This, my friends, is beautiful, but it will not change the political agenda. It will not change the system which we desperately need. Combat occupiers. The fact that Obama is a rotten president does not mean that all presidents are rotten. Come back disillusioned occupiers who have scattered to the far edges of the earth uh, where they are doing really cool, laudable things. Bless their hearts, but don't you see, occupiers, you are young. You are smart. You are smart people, but uh, by and large, you are a young uh, generation. And young people, smart though they may be, are inclined to 
hasty generalization. And here's what happened. Obama betrayed you. Let's face it. The occupiers, if they voted for anybody, probably voted for Obama. And disillusion now because Obama's agenda has been uh, almost as if it were designed to shatter the left into pieces. I do not think Obama is like a plot to shatter the left, like a great comet crashing into a planet. But this has been the fact. And look at, as an example, I cite the occupiers who are, let's face it, part of the left. The media is loath to say, but they are part of the left. They only cause a Fox News to have a conniption. They only cause Fox News to have a hissy fit, a hissy snitty fit uh, in the way that only Fox can. And that, you know, if it gives Fox conniptions, it can't be all bad. If it gives Fox conniptions, it can't be all bad. If it gives Fox conniptions, oh no, it can't be all bad. And in fact, Occupy Wall Street was very important, very good, and a big hope. But in my opinion, giving you my reading of reality here, is that they, being young, uh, reacted, they overreacted to the fact that Obama turned out to be a crappy president. <laughs> A guy whose agenda has somehow wound up with everything being uh, Republican. We have, everything's now Republican. I would just point this out. <laughs> it supports my theory that Barack Obama is a, a neocon posing as a centrist Democrat. Okay, please note. Barack Obama is a neocon who is posing as a centrist Democrat. <laughs> Uh, Obama is a neocon posing as a centrist Democrat, as evidenced by the fact that we have a, a, uh, a Republican everything. We have a Republican uh, health care bill. Hey, today the health care bill got uh, let off the hook by the Supreme Court today. On this very day, June 28, 2012, this is true. The, the, the Supreme Court let Obamacare off the hook. <laughs> <You know? laughs> In other words, it said it was constitutional. You know, it was a rotten bill, but it was constitutional. <laughs> anyway, anyway. But, hey, guys, it's a Republican bill. It came from the Heritage Foundation. What a happy day this is for the Heritage Foundation. Their idea, which the Democrats stole. It just got vindicated. It's just too weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the left are in pieces because the left don't like Obamacare because it doesn't have the public option and it doesn't have the public option because our good friend o Obama uh, uh, snuck off and uh, bartered it away. <laughs> he spent the whole time bartering everything away. He piddled away his vast majority. He blew one opportunity after another. It's just enough to make you blow into pieces. The left are in pieces, I tell you. Yes, yes my yes, friend, yes, the left yes, are in pieces. Yes, pieces. Yes, my friends, the left are in pieces. The left in America are in pieces, and we're looking for them. Please watch where you step. <laughs> left are in uh, pieces, uh, for example, because Obama went off and he made a deal. He made bad deals. He made a bad deal with the insurance companies. He just tossed and chucked the public option, which was, uh, it wasn't just what lefties wanted. It was what the majority wanted. Hey, this is one of the subtexts of this show, which is jam-packed with subtext, don't you see, is that most people wanted the public option. Obama said he wanted the public option, but that was in the past. And then, when he got to be president, he snuck off. And not only did he barter away and just kind of give away the public option in secret, he then went on to let people who wanted the public option keep on working for it and spending their money trying to realize it when you see Barack Obama had made it impossible and not told anybody. Now that's really bad. That's really bad.
And so what has happened, this whole idea of an asteroid shattering the, the Democrats and the left. Obama crashed into planet left. Could we make le the left a planet? You know, if it was ever a coherent planet, it was blown into pieces. And among these pieces are the diaspora of the Occupy movement. Who are, uh, in a kind of a, you know, it was a kind of an inspiring way, but I think uh, the wrong way, are doing without leaders, you know, doing without the traditional trappings of politics. And I really do think this has to do with, with asteroid Obama. <laughs> asteroid Obama uh, it convinced a whole generation, almost a whole generation, that uh, electoral politics was impossible, utterly futile. I'm pretty sure that's what you would hear from Occupy people. Right? And you know, uh, Occupy people, that ain't gonna work. We have got to change the agenda. Now listen, come on back. Come on, Occupy people, come back. I love you all. Uh, and you are really our biggest hope, but you're young and you overgeneralize. You see, the fact that Barack Obama was a lousy president, it doesn't mean there's no such thing as a good president. Right, Barack? That's right, Perry. Hey, young people, the fact that I, Barack Obama, turned out to be a sucky president and one with a notable speech impediment doesn't mean there's no such thing as a good president. Right, John? This is a John F. Kennedy in heaven, uh, watching you people uh, looking for uh, pieces of the left. I'm sorry, but uh, the uh, fact that I stand as a uh, historic proof that the fact that uh, Barack Obama is a uh, sucky president uh, doesn't mean there's uh, no such thing as a good president. Uh, right, Franklin? This is Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Right you are, John. The fact that Barack Obama is the worst Democrat ever the worst Democrat, as Perry Logan says, in all the parallel universes of bad Democrats. Barack Obama, who has seized the crown of worst president ever from the pointy little skull of George W. Bush, is a bad president, doesn't prove there is no such thing as a good leader. And I stand as proof. Right, Abe? This is Abraham Lincoln. Yay! You may remember me as the president who worked those rebel traitors who just thrashed and whipped and flayed and beat and humiliated those bloody rebel traitors. If I had to do over again, I'd mute their butts. I would totally mute their butts. This just is. Abraham Lincoln says if he had it to do over again, he would nuke those rebels' butts. Yay. Hey, occupiers, come back. We can't do this without a leader. The fact that Obama sucks doesn't mean they all suck. I don't see how we're going to change the agenda with you beautiful young folks out wandering the earth doing good deeds. Yeah, um, I love you. I love you young people and you really are our only hope. Two things. You can't write songs. Look. You cannot write songs. I am really, really sure that young people today cannot discern a melody from a random series of notes. And I say that the love Perry. <laughs> yeah, but we're serious here. Uh, okay, it's not like I'm going to stop them from writing songs, okay? Okay, never mind the songs. And the other thing is, uh, you overgeneralize uh, when you say that electoral politics is utterly futile. Which, see, it's because, uh, it's because many people, young people are certainly not the only ones, and the occupiers are not the only ones, who have been just utterly turned off, shattered into pieces. Those are pieces of the left, those are pieces of most of us. And, uh, I don't know, we got to pick them up somehow, you know. 
we got to get it together to fight off what has turned out to be kind of a, a, a right-wing takeover. This was supposed to be the democratic decade, and it has turned into a right-wing route. I guess the joke's on us. Yeah.